good evening everyone myself dr apurva mittal and welcome to an academy today we will be discussing about transport of carbon dioxide yesterday we discussed about carbon of ox uh, carb uh, transport of oxygen but before starting our class let me introduce you an academy an academy is india's leading platform for online courses and uh, we will uh, through this platform let's crack neat pg and by getting the un uh, before that uh, about me myself dr apurva mittal as i mentioned earlier and i did my mbbs from kasturba medical college mangalore and md anesthesia from savai mansing hospital jaipur and currently i am working uh, i'm uh, pursuing idccm from kovey medical center and hospital coimbatore and uh, for getting the unacademy learning app uh install it and through that you can have the an academy plus and the iconic subscription in which you'll be able to have the lectures from the top educators of india for example dr pavan kandhari dr zainab dr rajesh and dr preeti sharma so uh, by uh, installing the an academy learning app you will be able to avail the classes from all these top educators and also we have two subscriptions either the plus and the iconic subscriptions now why uh, i am telling you to have the an academy learning app and subscribe for the plus or the iconic subscription because in the plus subscription you will be able to avail the live classes live classes for all the 19 subjects which are required for you to crack the neat pg exams also will be having live test and quizzes and most important will be having a batch course and structured schedule you know uh, we have classes on the youtube channel also but in the youtube you might uh, you know miss out the classes or the particular topic in the plus subscription and the iconic subscriptions we have the structured courses and the batch courses which will cover all the important topics and the subjects which are required to crack the neat pg and we will make sure that none of the important topics are left and uh, so these are very important so therefore go for the plus subscription we have another iconic subscription in this we are accustomed with the prep ladder in which you will be having the video lectures the question bank rapid revision courses which is very important to crack the neat pg it is very important to revise properly okay so we will be having the rapid revision courses and also the handwritten notes so these are the two subscriptions uh so these subscriptions you can avail either for the 12 months 18 months 24 months and 36 months i would advise you if you are in the second or the third year uh so uh, go for either a two year or a three year course because in that you will be able to you know revise the subjects thoroughly and you will be updated um uh, updated about the subject so please offer these if you are in the second or uh, third year if you are an intern you can offer one year or one and a half year course and if you apply my code that is apurva okay you will get 10% discount so if you are opting for example for a one year course if it is 55000 if you apply my code apurva you will get 10% discount on it and then it will be only for 49500 so you will have a benefit of 4125 rupees similarly you can also opt for a one month course or a three month course in which you will have the rapid revision you know and get to know the important points which are uh, uh, which are very important for you to crack the neat pg exams here also for one month three month or a six month course if you apply my code that is apurva you will get 10% discount on the same okay so uh, let's start our today's topic but before that i would like to re uh, revise with you yesterday's class yesterday uh, we discussed about the transport of oxygen okay 
And from yesterday's class, the points to remember is what is the Dalton's law of partial pressure? In the Dalton's law of partial pressure, I told that the total pressure, okay, the total pressure in uh, which is exerted by a gas mixture is equal to the partial pressure, okay, equal to the partial pressure of of different gas components okay it is equal to the partial pressure of different gas components the sum of the partial pressure of different gas components for example if we are taking the air the atmosphere the total pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury that is because the sum of the partial pressure of oxygen plus the partial pressure of nitrogen plus the partial pressure of carbon dioxide so this is what is the dalton's law of pressure then i mentioned about the oxygen cascade that is the tension okay uh, the tension of the oxygen okay and the tension of oxygen it decreases from the atmosphere till the tissue level till the tissue level and why does it happen i i mentioned it very clearly and explained in detail yesterday so i'm not going into the detail today now then i told you from the alveoli to the blood okay it is because of the concentration gradient that the oxygen because the oxygen level is more and the at the alveoli level so because of the concentration gradient there is diffusion okay of oxygen from the alveolus to the blood and that diffusion is based upon the fixed law of diffusion and this fixed law of diffusion it is the diffusion of the gases it is directly proportional to the surface area and inversely proportional to the thickness of the respiratory membrane i also told you the respiratory membrane is made up of the six layers please revise it because questions are asked then i told you the diffusion the diffusion capacity of the lung is measured by the diffusion capacity of remember carbon monoxide okay am i clear am i clear all these points i have revised with you yesterday in detail okay so these are the important questions which are asked then another important question which is asked are the factors okay which increase or decrease the diffusion capacity of the lung tissue so please revise this also then uh, after that how is the oxygen carried in the blood okay so the oxygen is carried in the blood in the two forms that is the dissolved form that is the dissolved form and that is only three percent and the other the major it is bound to hemoglobin bound to hemoglobin that is 97 percent and then the odc curve what is the odc it is the oxygen dissociation curve it is between the oxygen which is bound to the hemoglobin which is on the y-axis and the partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood on the x-axis so it tells us about the affinity of the oxygen with the hemoglobin okay and in this please remember the p50 value and the factors which affect the odc curve that is also important what is bohr's effect bohr's effect is because of the decrease in the ph or in the acidic medium the odc it shifts towards right it shifts towards right that is more oxygen okay more oxygen is available to the tissues okay so that is what is known as the Bohr effect and then we will talk about the double Bohr effect double Bohr effect it is seen at the feto maternal okay it is seen at the feto maternal side okay so this these are the points which we discussed yesterday which is very important that is the transport of oxygen now today we'll be discussing about the carbon dioxide transport okay the carbon dioxide transport this is also very important point now as we discussed yesterday the oxygen transport guys am i clear and audible if any doubt please let me know 
okay as we discussed yesterday the oxygen is transported in blood in two forms that is in the dissolved form in the dissolved form and also bound to hemoglobin right but the carbon dioxide okay the carbon dioxide it is carried by three forms in the blood that is one is the dissolved form okay the dissolved form that is 7% okay that is 7% one is in the bicarbonate form which is maximum it is 70% and the car amino compound form which is also bound to the hemoglobin that is 23% so carbon dioxide it is transported in blood in the three forms in the dissolved form which is only 7% maximum form is in the bicarbonate form okay in the bicarbonate form that is 70% and in the carbamino compound form that is only 23%. Is it clear? Now, coming to different forms, in the dissolved form, okay, in the dissolved form, it is because of the concentration, concentration gradient, right? Concentration gradient that is through the diffusion, through the diffusion. Now, we all know that the venous blood, okay, the venous blood, it has 45 millimeters of mercury of carbon dioxide partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 45 whereas in the arterial blood it is only 40 millimeters of mercury in the dissolved form so from the venous to the arterial side uh, it is uh, transferred uh, it is transferred as 0.3 ml per 100 ml is transferred in the dissolved form okay in the venous blood it is only 45 and in the arterial side it is 40 millimeters of mercury which contains 2.4 ml so uh, there is a difference of 0.3 ml so in the dissolved form only 0.3 ml of carbon dioxide per 100 ml of blood uh, uh, is transferred now coming to a very important point in the bicarbonate form so maximum amount of carbon dioxide right the maximum amount amount of carbon dioxide is uh, in the blood is carried in the bicarbonate form that is 70 percent now how it is carried in blood in the bicarbonate form see from the tissues okay because of the metabolism okay because of the metabolism from the tissues the carbon dioxide is produced now this carbon dioxide diffuses into the plasma Okay, or some amount of it is carried dissolved in the plasma. Now, major amount of the major amount of carbon dioxide, what will it do? It will come from the tissue into the RBCs. Okay, it will come into from the tissues into the RBC. Now, in the RBC, let me just uh, change the ink color. Okay, in the RBC, this carbon dioxide, it reacts with water. It reacts with water and this is uh, the enzyme which is responsible is carbonic anhydrase. Carbon dioxide plus water, it converts into uh, carbonic acid that is H2CO3. Okay, now in the presence of carbonic anhydrase, it gets converted into HCO3 plus H plus I. Okay. So carbon dioxide kya hua? tissue se RBCs mein aaya. RBCs mein it reacted with water to form carbonic anhydrase. Uh, in the presence of carbonic anhydrate, it formed the H2CO3 which gets converted into H plus and HCO3 minus. Now, what happens? Ye jo HCO3 minus hai, hai, bicarb iron hai, it diffuses out of the RBCs. It diffuses out of the RBCs. So, is me kawa RBCs ke under kawa negative charge kam ho gaya, right? Negative charge kam ho gaya. So, is ko balance karne ke liye, balance karne ke liye bahar se chloride aya. Okay, plasma se chloride aya. It enters into the RBC and this is known as chloride shift. Are you getting my point? Are you getting my point? Any doubts? Any doubt? So, in the bicarb form, what happens? The carbon dioxide, okay, 
the majority of it it will go into the rbc's rbc's may it reacts with the water to form hco3 h2co3 which will in turn break into hco3 minus and h plus now hco3 minus it goes into the bicarb ions it goes out into the plasma and to uh, balance this out the chloride will come inside the chloride will come inside and this is known as chloride shift or the hamburger phenomena or the hamburger phenomena are you getting my point okay now h plus ions tha, it reacts with the hemoglobin and it is the reduced form of the hemoglobin. It is the reduced form of the hemoglobin. So this is in the bicarbonate form. So the bicarbonate form, it is responsible for the chloride shift also known as the hamburger phenomena. So the carbon dioxide from the tissue, it goes into the RBC inside the rbc it reacts with the water to form h2co3 which will in turn go into h plus plus hco3 minus hco3 minus here it will the hco3 minus will go into the plasma and from the plasma chloride will enter into the rbc and this is known as the chloride shift or the hamburger phenomena h plus will react with hemoglobin to form the reduced hemoglobin okay so okay hco3 minus it leaves the rbc in exchange of the chloride transported to the lungs in the plasma and this chloride remember it is osmotically active so chloride ke saath kya hoga? water will also drag into the rbc's and therefore rbc ka size increase ho jata and therefore the hematocrit of venous blood is 3% greater than the arterial blood okay so and question which is asked is the chloride shift or the hamburger phenomena it takes place okay it takes place at the plasma level at the rbc level at the rbc level okay now dissolved form ho gaya, uh, bicarb form ho gaya, fill last mein hota hai, the carb amino compound form okay ye jo carbon dioxide hai, okay the carbon dioxide from the tissues in the carb amino form either okay either it binds with the plasma proteins either it binds with the plasma proteins and is transported or it binds with the hemoglobin in the rbc's to form carb amino hemoglobin to form the carb amino hemoglobin and through this it is transported by 23 percent okay 23 percent sa transport hota hai. Okay, so plasma may carbon dioxide it combines with the amino group of the plasma proteins to form the carb amino proteins and in the RBC it combines with the hemoglobin to form the carb amino hemoglobin. So this is the three forms in which the carbon dioxide is carried by the blood. A dissolved form, dusra the bicarbonate form which is the uh, most important the 70 percent of it is transported through the bicarbonate form and in the bicarbonate form we have to remember the chloride shift or the hamburger phenomena okay and lastly 23 percent it is in the form of carb amino of uh, uh, carb amino form okay now Kal hum logo ne kya padha tha? Oxygen dissociation curve. Okay, yesterday we read about the oxygen dissociation curve. Similarly, there is a carbon dioxide dissociation curve. Remember the oxygen dissociation curve, the ODC. The ODC was between what, guys? ODC was between what? The ODC was between the oxygen saturation of hemoglobin and partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood and it was a sigmoid shaped curve okay the upper part of the curve was flat the upper part of the curve was flat similarly carbon dioxide dissociation curve okay 
it is between remember the carbon dioxide dissociation curve is between the total carbon dioxide content in the blood and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide okay so oxygen uh, the carbon dioxide dissociation curve is between the total carbon dioxide content and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide okay now this has two points there is a arterial point and the mixed venous point now sabse pehle is curve ke bare mein kya yaad rakhna hai this is steep okay it is steep it does not have okay it does not have a plateau a uh, odc mein kya tha it had a plateau but the oxygen dissociation curve it is steep isme plateau point nahi aata theek hai the second point arterial point arterial point kya hai arterial blood mein partial pressure of carbon dioxide is how much it is 40 which corresponds to the total carbon dioxide content of 480 ml per liter theek hai so arterial point pe kya hai it is 40 mm of mercury with the total art, uh, content of carbon dioxide uh, uh, approximately 480 ml per liter now agar ye arterial point ko theek hai If I am taking the partial pressure as 40 millimeters of mercury and taking it at a venous, okay, this is the venous and this is the arterial, okay. यहाँ पे अगर if the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is same, okay, and I am taking it to the venous point, so the total carbon dioxide content, the total carbon dioxide content, it is around 500. It is around 500. That means there is increased carbon dioxide content as a result of lower oxygen saturation okay the total content of carbon dioxide it decreases uh, it increases with the decrease in the oxygen saturation with the increase uh, uh, lower oxygen saturation a venous point venous point pe kya the partial pressure is 46 it is 46 Okay, at that point, the total content is 520. Now, if I see, okay, if I increase the oxygen content, if I increase the oxygen content at the same, are you getting my point, guys? Are you getting my point? Any doubt? Any doubt? So I am telling that if, agar, dekho. आर्टीरियल पॉइंट है आर्टीरियल पॉइंट पे 40 पे इट इज 480, ठीक है नो वीनस पॉइंट पे वीनस पॉइंट पे इट इज 46 मिलीमीटर्स ऑफ मर्क्यूरी वी नो द एट इन द वीनस ब्लड द पार्शियल प्रेशर ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इज 46 मिलीमीटर्स ऑफ मर्क्यूरी ठीक है द टोटल कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड कंटेंट इज 520. नो एज आई एम इंक्रीजिंग द partial pressure of carbon dioxide as a result of increasing oxygenation more amount of uh, this is the haldane effect haldane effect haldane effect me kya bolte hai ki as the oxygen increases as the oxygen increases okay uh, carbon dioxide it dissociates it dissociates from from hemoglobin and this occurs at the alveolar level so if i am increasing the carbon if i am increasing the oxygen content if i am increasing the oxygen content the total carbon dioxide content it decreases it decreases that means more amount of hemoglobin is required is available to for oxygenation for oxygenation and that is known as the haldane effect are you getting my point are you getting my point any doubts in this so this is the carbon dioxide associ uh, dissociation curve arterial point and mixed venous point okay now what is physiological uh, carbon uh, carbon dioxide uh, dissociation curve that is if i am joining this venous point and the arterial point so this is the physiological carbon dioxide dissociation curve 
Now, as I mentioned, what are the factors which affect the dissociation curve? That is, first is oxygen. And because of this oxygen, we are getting the haldane effect. Haldane effect, kya hota? it is seen at the lung level. Okay, it is seen at the lung level. What happens is, what happens is, see, at the B point, okay, the deoxyhemoglobin, the deoxyhemoglobin, it is capable of loading more carbon dioxide than oxyhemoglobin. Okay, but lung may alveolar level pe kya ho hai? Oxygen level increase ho hai. Okay, lung may oxygen increase ho hai. To kya hoga? To kya hoga? More hemoglobin it binds with oxygen and there is unloading of carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide is exhaled and this carbon dioxide is exhaled and this is known as haldane effect so if in short haldane effect it is seen at the alveolar level hamburger was seen at the level of the rbc's okay haldane effect me kya hai? remember haldane l hai L it is at the lung level. Oxygen jesse jesse increase hota hai. Alveolar mein kya Oxygen is more as compared to carbon dioxide. So oxygenation of hemoglobin in the lung results in carbon dioxide unloading. Carbon dioxide it dissociates from hemoglobin at the alveolar level and it is exhaled out and that is known as Haldane effect. Are you getting my point? Any doubts in this? So, this is the Haldane effect. This is Haldane effect. Okay. So, kal hum logo ne kya padha tha? Haldane. Kal hum ne padha tha Bohr effect. Bohr effect was in the ODC. Oxygen dissociation curve. Is me hum ne padha tha ki the sh curve it shifts towards the right. It shifts towards the right. Okay. Because of decrease in the pH or increase in the H plus ion. That is the Bohr effect. Okay. The Bohr effect, it describes how carbon dioxide and H plus, it affects hemoglobin affinity for oxygen. Matlab, if the curve is shifting towards the right, the affinity of hemoglobin with oxygen, it decreases and that is known as the Bohr effect. That is known as the Bohr effect. Okay, more amount of oxygen is available to the tissues. Okay, that is the Bohr effect. What happens? Haldane effect. Haldane, it is seen at the lung level. Oxygen, it increases. That means unloading of carbon dioxide at alveolar level. At alveolar level, that is known as the Haldane effect. It is the hemoglobin affinity for carbon dioxide at the lung level that is Haldane effect. Are you getting my point? Guys, this is very important. Okay. So, abhi tak hum logo ne kya pada? We, uh, we studied how carbon dioxide is carried by the blood that is in three forms. One is the dissolved form. Other is in the bicarbonate form in which we have to remember the chloride shift or the hamburger phenomena. And third is in the carp amino form. Okay, then we have to remember about the Haldane effect. Haldane effect, it tells us that at the lung and the al or the alveolar level where the oxygen concentration is very high there is unloading of carbon dioxide from hemoglobin and uh, and uh, that carbon dioxide is exhaled out that is haldane effect the other factor which affects the which affects the carbon dioxide dissociation curve is 2,3 dpg. Yesterday we uh, studied that this 2,3 dpg hai, it combines with deoxyhemoglobin. Hai na? It combines with reduced hemoglobin. Right? So, this 2,3 dpg hai, ye agar increase hogi, to kya hoga? It competes with carbon dioxide for the same site of hemoglobin in reduced blood. So, therefore, there is decrease in the formation of carbon amino hemoglobin that is 
it shifts the curve to the right decreasing the carbon dioxide carrying capacity okay dr sudarshan uh, welcome to the class i hope till now it is clear okay i am talking about the carbon dioxide dissociation curve okay if any doubts please let me know others also please let me know if there is any doubt so the 2 3 dpg how it affects the carbon dioxide if there is increase in the 2 3 dpg the curve it shift towards the right decreasing the carbon dioxide carrying capacity now body temperature increase in the body temperature carbon dioxide increase hoga theek hai so there is more carbon dioxide it will shift the curve towards the left it will shift the curve towards the left now carbon dioxide blood mein carry ho gaya theek hai blood se from the tissues okay it went into the blood now it has to go into the lungs into the alveoli to get released out so how the carbon dioxide is released from the blood into the lungs theek hai so in the dissolved state dissolved state theek hai dissolved state mein kya hai ab venous blood aa raha hai venous blood aa raha hai towards the lung to what through pulmonary artery to pulmonary artery it is coming towards the lungs theek hai ab kya hoga isme the carbon dioxide concentration is more and in the lungs it is less so it will diffuse from the pulmonary artery into the lungs theek hai into the lungs so the diffusion to the diffusion the release of carbon dioxide from the pulmonary artery into the lungs is around 4 ml per 100 ml of the blood this is to diffusion now dusra form kya tha carbamino hemoglobin hai na it was in the form of carbamino hemoglobin from carbamino hemoglobin kaise ye release ho raha hai into the into the environment into the environment and there we have to remember about the haldane effect haldane effect mein hum logo ne kya padha ki alveoli hai ki alveoli hai isme kya hai ऑक्सीजन ज्यादा है तो दिस ऑक्सीजन इट डिफ्यूजेस इनटू द ब्लड ठीक है ब्लड में रिड्यूस्ड फॉर्म ऑफ हीमोग्लोबिन है ठीक है जब ऑक्सीजन इंक्रीज होगा तो ये हीमोग्लोबिन क्या करेगा इट विल कंबाइन विद द ऑक्सीजन टू फॉर्म ऑक्सी हीमोग्लोबिन उसकी वजह से द एच प्लस आयन्स विल गेट रिलीज ठीक है टू न्यूट्रलाइज दिस एच प्लस आयन्स फ्रॉम द एनवायरमेंट द एच इट एंटर्स इन द ब्लड it enters into the blood and therefore the chloride ions it gets okay it will combine with h plus ions okay and this is because of the uh, oxygen increase in the oxygen it enters into the rbcs and converts the deoxyhemoglobin to oxyhemoglobin which has low affinity for carbon dioxide it has low affinity for carbon dioxide and it releases carbon dioxide from carbamino hemoglobin into the plasma into the plasma and this is known as the haldane effect is it clear and this is known as the haldane effect to iska matlab kya hua oxygen jab andar aaya to kya kya isne deoxyhemoglobin to oxyhemoglobin to uski wajah se kya hoga uski wajah se kya hoga the carbon dioxide theek hai hco3 plus h plus will give h2co3 ठीक है एच टू ओ प्लस सीओ टू द सीओ टू विच विल बी रिलीज इट विल गो इन टू द इनवायरमेंट एंड दैट इज नोन एज द हेल्डेन इफेक्ट विच अकर्स एट द लंग लेवल आर यू गेटिंग माई पॉइंट डॉक्टर सुदर्शन इज इट क्लियर ओके नाउ बाइका फॉर्म से बाइका फॉर्म से अभी हमने देखा ऑक्सीजन ठीक है ऑक्सीजन फ्रॉम द इन्वायरमेंट इट इज कमिंग इन साइड ठीक है Now this oxygen is getting attached with the hemoglobin, the oxy hemoglobin. So what will happen? Oxy hemoglobin, H plus ions release or it is okay. Now this H plus ions it gets, uh, it reacts with HCO three. It reacts with HCO three, which is coming from the environment. Okay, to form H two CO three, to form HCO two plus 
H2O. Now, as HCO3 ions are increasing inside the RBCs, so kya hoga? the chloride, it will go back into the plasma. So, there is reverse chloride shift. So, chloride shift, the hamburger phenomena, it was occurring at the RBC or the plasma level. Okay, but the reverse the reverse chloride shift it occurs at the lung level it occurs at the lung level are you getting my point so oxyhemoglobin it is a strong acid it increases the h plus ion and to neutralize this h plus ions the hco3 it enters into the rbc and therefore the chloride it shifts out and therefore it is known as the reverse chloride shift are you getting my point so carbon dioxide जो है ठीक है वो क्या हुआ वो टिश्यू से ब्लड में आया ब्लड से एल्वियोलाई में तो ब्लड से वो एल्वियोलाई में कैसे रिलीज हो रहा है ठीक है इन टू द एनवायरमेंट हाउ इट इज रिलीजिंग डिज फॉर्म में हो गया फ्रॉम द फ्रॉम द कार्बामाइनो हीमोग्लोबिन बिकॉज ऑफ द हाइड्रेन इफेक्ट एंड फ्रॉम द बाइकार्बोनेट फॉर्म बिकॉज ऑफ द रिवर्स क्लोराइड शिफ्ट आर यू इज इट क्लियर is it clear any doubts in this any doubts in this so today we discussed about the carbon dioxide transport okay kaise the carbon dioxide is uh, carried from the tissues okay it is first carried into the blood okay blood mein it is carried in three forms dissolved form then in the um, bicarbonate form and the carbamino form okay फिर कैसे फ्रॉम द ब्लड इट इज रिलीज इन टू द इनवायरमेंट इट इज रिलीज इन टू द एल्वियोलाइट वी हैव स्टडीड सो दिस वॉज अबाउट द ट्रांसपोर्ट ऑफ ऑक्सीजन दैट वॉज ऑल फॉर टूडेज क्लास इफ यू लाइक माई क्लास ऑन द यूट्यूब प्लीज क्लिक द लाइक बटन सब्सक्राइब टू इट एंड हिट द बेल आईकिन एंड गेट द नोटिफिकेशन ऑल्सो for getting the unacademy plus or the iconic subscriptions if you apply my referral code apurva you will get 10% discount on the same also we have uh, on the telegram app we have a channel let's crack neat pg channel okay in through this channel we notify when is the class what will be the topic which will be scheduled so please uh, uh, in the telegram app uh, join this channel so that you will come to know when are the classes held okay uh, guys any doubt any doubt if any doubt please let me know okay so that was all for today's class thank you and have a nice day tomorrow tomorrow at 11 am tomorrow at 11 am that is on 3 first we'll discuss a very important topic that is pulse oximetry okay we'll uh, discuss about pulse oximetry so that was all for